In the chill hours of the early morning on the streets of Provend, Callard and Mertian surveyed the goods of a local tailor. Callard's tutelage of Mertian would extend beyond just simple horse riding and the use of sword and shield, but to the finer acts of chivalry as well. For Mertian to learn how to be a budding socialite, he must first look the part. Picking their way through the varying fabrics in front of them, Callard's rough hands moved across the linens, cottons, and silks of the merchant's stock, his calluses gently snagging at the material, eagerly holding on to his palms before snapping back in place, chasing the knight's hands. Mertian's eyes were set on a more simple fabric, something heavier, coarser, and altogether far more itchy. Uh, the, the, I believe, sir, that the felt will do me just fine. It's it's felt, Mertian. You 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 can't choose felt. Felt's not a felt's not a royal fabric. M maybe look at this Azerian silk. But sir, please uh, allow me to explain. Uh, the uh, felt is quite nice in the winter, and it breathes well in the summer. It it breathes well in the summer, Mertian. What? I, n no no one has ever said that to me, Mertian. And and I, and I promise you, uh, it it is it is chilly out. I can see right now, Quaris is looking at you with a wild eye because he hates your fashion sense, but you want to wear felt. Yeah, sure, I think that felt would, would be quite strapping. Uh, my old missus, she, uh, she quite liked the felt whenever I would uh, rub it on her cheek casually during dinner. She quite liked the feel of it. Oh, Mertian, do not need to know that one. But listen, I will buy you a small little, like, glove made of made of felt. You can You can wear that. Thank you, sir. I think we, that, that fit me quite nice. Uh, yeah, quite nice indeed. And uh, you're a blacksmith. That thing's going to go up like a tinderbox if you use that in the in the smithing. So I hope you don't bring the felt with you. Oh, sure. Joe, trust me. That would go in the finest cabinets. Okay, yeah, that, yeah, the finest cabinets. So we'll get you some felt gloves, and let's be about our business here. We sent too long in, in Provend as it is, and you're clearly going stir-crazy trying to find felt gloves in the middle of Provend. So let's let's leave this place. Here we are back at episode 7 of Callard of Garamond's Grand Journey Through Valandia. And uh, before we concluded our episode last time, we were able to do a little tournament. We were able to upgrade some of our men. And now we have uh, still an ongoing fight with the uh, Western Empire. And we're winning quite well. 5,200 of our total strength compared to their 3,200. Or I guess you want to say 53 to 33 if you want to look at the... Easy math on that. Um, so let's take a look at the party real quick again. And I've organized this a little bit before pressing play, or at least record, to talk about this just a second here. So I've organized all of our men by uh, both unit types. So we have all of our infantry up top, followed by then their tier. So followed by uh, one, two, three, then five. <laughs> and then the same thing with our archers. And then I've, I've created a little bit of a, a line here, like a segregation. Now, these are going to be our, our auxiliary line, because they're all Batanian, and that's what I kind of talked about in one of our previous episodes, is why don't I make this really cool kind of uh, reserves or auxiliary line that is strictly Batanians. So, since horse archers are not as prevalent in Valandia, I'm going to choose them, or switch them, all to group four. Of course, doing that, click them, click this little banner, then select them on four. Now, unfortunately, every time we boot this save up, uh, we will have to redo that right now because of our current bug, but um, that's not a big deal. And what I'd like to do is take these saplings and bring them up. And we'll do the sprouts too. I mean, if we get in more battles, it'll be good. And here's the main reason I'm doing that. If we take a look at these arboreals, which are the, the top end progression of the sprout line, they're quite good. 200 hand, or one handed, uh, 200 bow, uh, 180 crossbow, which doesn't matter but 140 athletics too. So they're actually really solid archers that you can get it you can take advantage of. If you take a look over here, here's our highborn warrior and this is part of the Fian line. So they're actually like in between Fian and Champion or Fian champions. Um, they have 200 one-handed rather than 222 handed and 200 bow versus 260 bow and of course 140 athletics versus uh, uh, 200 athletics. So they're still pretty awesome. And if I can get all these guys upgraded to Arboreals and 8 plus uh, 6, you know, that, that's a really good solid 15 archers to have at my disposal that are bow archers. That's the nice thing about them is they're bow archers where you don't get a lot of bows in Volandia. You can see here we've got, um, what is it, 4, 2, so 6, then 11, 12, then uh, 15 total 
crossbowmen. So it'll be nice to have a nice variance in our army. And it'll be kind of cool for uh, Callard's overall feel here because um, I like it because they're, they're bandits, you know. We're, we're trying to be a knight of Bretonia and, and redeem those ha who have uh, wronged in the lady's eyes. So, ooh, we're over our troops limit, huh? Well, let's uh, get rid of some rat. Ooh, we're over, we're over by quite a bit. Um, let's actually knock out some of these recruits. Or, you know what? We do want these peasants as part of a role play right now, but I'm going to knock out a couple of them. Um, actually, let's let's make these troops footmen. I've got five left of them. We need to get rid of five men. So, I hate to say it. Well, they're almost leveling up. Let's do this. One, two, three, four, five. That should do it. And we'll, we can get more peasants at any point, pretty much. So that'll be uh, the easy thing there. And what we're going to do here is, we've got these nice band of looters outside. Uh, we do have some wars to jump into as well. well let's kind of open up this episode with a quick little fight here, hopefully of some looters. Get some good uh, experience. We did just miss someone from the hand over there, I think, a second ago. Yes, yes, I understand, you're a brigand. You look salt and peppery. Ah, we have the militia joining us as well. We're jumping in here. Oh man, look at look at lovely Callard of Garamont. Footman! Take our footman and just charge into our footman. Um, yeah, just full, of char full of charge. Callard, Callard himself. And I know that you guys were saying there were some issues with performance and the battles. Um, I have since attempted to fix that. And we will see how that all works. Um, a lot of it will be... Um, me tweaking some of these things as we play through. So if I do jump into the options menus when we go jump into really big fights, I apologize. And I did reduce the battle size a little bit too. So that should help out. And apparently cloth simulation is having an unnecessarily high demand on version 1.3. It is unfortunately a beta branch issue and not a PC issue, which is good at the same time. Whoa. All right, Callard of Garamont's ready to skewer people with his heavy Valandian lance. We got Got snow going everywhere. Callard of Garamont misses every single first blow, but that's okay. A feint is just as important as the actual hit when it comes to fighting someone. Aha! Skewered! The hell with you? How dare you speak to a knight in such a way? Well, let it be known that Callard of Garamont killed but one man on this first one, but still is deserving of a victory nay. And a good little outcome there. Six uh, six looters. Or, ooh, one. Like uh, the militia took some. Continue to kind of pick that apart. Let's actually run back over here. I want to see if we get any of those gentlemen of a hand. Now, oh, okay, the hand is actually still a minor clan. And... You guys know how much I love Minor Clans. Minor Clans I find to be a really, really good way to get a lot of er really good early game experience. Um, but let's take a look at what we can do when it comes to the kingdom and some other armies. So traveling to Ox Hall, waiting in Sargo, and traveling to Amatatus to besiege. Well, let's see here. Let's go travel to Amatatus. And where is that? That's, that's really far, actually. I was like, that's like inland. It's really rare that you get to you get to besiege these more like interior king or uh, cities. The AI is usually very good about choosing these outskirts to kind of create a, a fun frontline narrative, which I'm kind of okay with. Um, so let's actually go over here real quick and take a look at some as we head over there. I always kind of like to take a quick look at some of these other towns to see if they have any recruits to pick up. Yes, I know we're gonna have to get rid of a um, a peasant or two, but Picking up those squires is probably your your should be your main focus whenever you pay, play a Valandian or any kind of playthrough when you're trying to focus on a noble line. And Valandia's noble line is extremely, extremely beneficial. Were those looters looking to attack the caravan of Melon the Caravan Varanesser? Not on my watch. Cal of Garamond protects these streets. The Pilgrim Road to Batania. Oh, so close. I think I'm pretty slow right now. Ah, uh, young 
Young King Durthert on the other side of the, the ford there. The river. Ah, he's got a huge army. 546. Woof. Durthert, Thomond, Belgia, Erdrond, Morkan, and Luckend. Where they're going. Okay, so we still have we have such a such a huge amount of men. Infantry! Um, we're just gonna charge with our first line. We'll have our archers come in to support them. Stand up, move move. Looks like we might need to tweak out tweak some of this stuff a little bit. The Vlandian levy crossbowmen are looks to be entering into group one where we don't want them to. Them don't worry, man. We'll slowly go across this river. This is the best way. You have to they have to see the fear before it gets them. He hit me with a hammer. Yo, one, two, three, slash from Khaled of Garamond. He's not afraid of you. Unintentional rhyming scheme pattern here by the Knight of Bretonia. That's right, man. Enjoy the victory. Enjoy the fetid cold of the river. It looks like we're uh, we're probably going to get, if I take a look here, 33 plus 11. So it looks like we're going to get 44 men who are going to die of pneumonia in the early onset portion of this winter. Caled of Garamont's campaign ends cripplingly at the hands of an outbreak of pneumonia in his men. Let's take a look here. I actually want to look at my gear real quick. We did take a look at this at the end of the last episode, but I just kind of want to recap. Now, we still have a, we have a Midlands Palfrey, and I'd like to get up to, I think we're at 60. Let's take a look. Colored skill levels. Oh, one-handed. So, there are some, some things to take a look at when it comes to choosing your one-handed skills. You can do Shield Bash, which will cause 50% more damage. And across all of the Shield Bash skills, you're looking at a possible plus 120% damage. I personally do not find it very useful. I only find this one useful. Shield bashes now deal 20% more damage and stun your enemy for longer. Because Callard of Garamont is a, is a fan of both pocket sand and stunning with a shield. So um, we'll go with Raider to increase his weapon speed. And because he's got 52 skill, if you click this I button, we can also see that he gets a nice 3.6% 3 3 um, weapon speed bonus. And I believe that that then stacks with this to a, to a 76 uh, proceed weapons uh, uh, seven point six percent weapon speed bonus, so we're quite close to sixty riding, which will be quite nice um, because then we'll be able to use um, war horses, and that's going to be a big focus of ours. So let's. Where are these guys traveling to? Oxfall and Rotaton. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and fast forward here while we, I guess, head to Amatatus. That sounds pretty dangerous. Let's head in that direction and see if we find any other uh, uh, lords to attack or anything like that. Uh, running across half of the Western Empire on our own could be pretty scary. So let's click here and fast forward and see how it goes. All right, never mind. Looks like we're not going to do that at all because there's peace. <laughs> so no war targets for fair Valandia, I see. We shall stop at Sargo then to see if there is a promising uh, situation we can get involved in. Nothing in the arena just yet. We'll wait a little bit. I would like to do some blacksmithing with Mertian, but since it is such a tedious process, I think what I would do is sit down and film a good portion of the blacksmithing that I would then fast forward through and tell you guys, hey, you know, here's what I'm thinking here, here's what I'm thinking here, so that you get a better idea of what's going on. Let's take a look. The arena, ridge-tipped arming sword yet again. Could fetch a fair price for Khaled. Wayne the Golden is quite the good tactician, and Bitter Drought is another high charm and high medicine character. Anyone in the keep? Ah! Eckerd needs garrison troops in Usana. Usank Castle. That one's actually kind of tedious. Ooh, a milady. Well, let's see if Callard of Garamont 
can have a conversation with a noble in Sargo without his voice cracking. No, pardon, I did not catch your name. Ah, milady, I am Callard. Madame, uh, may I ask your name? I am Ellis, a local vassal of Durthert, king of the Valandians. I have heard your name. People speak of your deeds. It is good to finally meet you. <laughs> Milady, it is good to meet myself. I mean, you as well. Uh, would you care to pass the time with a game of Mutore? Mutore. Oh, certainly. I, I came always to keep the mind active and fresh. <laughs> It does indeed. Deed, deed. It does indeed, milady. Uh, let's begin then. Uh, so where do we go for this, huh? Is it over here? Well, let's uh, let's just kind of casually find that, huh? Where do we? Where do? You, oh, I, I see you've hidden your board, milady. Let's walk over here and maybe we can play this game. Maybe we won't play the game. You seem you seem preoccupied, milady. Um, clearly, I will come back at a later time. Um, Eckert, how about you? Fancy for a, a game of uh, of the old, oh, you know, something? No, nothing for you. Okay. Well. Uh, well then, I think that everyone here can all agree that uh, this was a fun endeavor. Uh, you you all have clearly heard of the Sea Raiders and the Force Bandits, and I don't appreciate the mocking that I'm dealing with right now. Perhaps, Ellis, again, we would like to play a game? No? Okay, well, uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get back to this. We'll, we'll come back at a later time. I, 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 I feel like I've just been blown off. Looks like we're a little bit of a bug there. But I do want to try playing some of those games. I've heard they're actually quite fun, and I've heard sometimes it can get kind of buggy. And uh, maybe I should not have uh, shown you the bug, but it's actually kind of fun to <laughs> kind of have that little side banter. I think you can do it right here, too. Game host. Sometimes it gets a little funky. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's 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 play here. So what exactly is Mutarer? It's a game of anticipation with no possibility of capturing. All your effort should be on reading your opponent and planning further ahead than him. Sounds fun. Let me know how much of a challenge you can stand and we'll get started. I'm ready to offer you a hard challenge and a friendly game. Um, you know what? Let's just play. Let's just kind of, uh, let's go wait. So I've never played this game. So let's take a look here at how to play. You can only move a pawn that is an opposing pawn next to it to the center tile. Every pawn that can freely be moved one tile along the outer edge. A pawn on the center tile can be moved to on any available tile. Okay, I see. The player wins the opponent has been blocked and can no longer make any moves. Interesting. Okay, so Callard of Garamont isn't afraid of a of a, a casual game here. Ah, I see. Opponent's turn. Hmm. Okay, so that's supposed to be black, a little aura around it, I guess. Interesting, I, I have no idea which is what. Okay. Aha! The old do -si do man in the fort, man in the center, man on the outside. Looks like I'm trying to just kind of stack again. Player wins if his opponent has been blocked and can no longer make any moves. I see. I'm trying to kind of block this little guy from doing much. Ah! My opponent has bested me. Well, it seems like Coward of Garamond is going to have to learn this game more intimately before the game host, if that is his real name, can trick me further. Now that I've been made a fool in two different avenues of Sargo, I believe we'll leave this town because it is full of charlatans and chiganery. We shall proceed to other locations. Ooh. Volunteer recruits, some hidden hand pawns and puppets. Um, unfortunately, our, our army is pretty much at max capacity, but those guys would have been pretty interesting to put into our army. We'll go to the tavern district and just kind of ransom these guys. Oh, I forgot. We're uh, we're actually a mercenary, so we should have turned them in, but that's okay. Um, the hidden hands, you guys know what I'm talking about. Puppeteer. 
is part of this line. And they have throwing weapons, little throwing daggers, and they're, I mean, they're quite good, but the throwing daggers are pretty underwhelming. So getting high quantities of these guys is not overly uh, suggested, I guess you could say. Um, but I guess another good option there would be to capture them, or uh, win that fight, take them, and then go and turn them in to a city, which is uh, typically a pretty good idea. Ooh, 25 troops in that place. That's a, that's a pretty hefty little little hideout there. A prize kettle hat over male quaff. Well, you know what? I'm itching for a tournament here. Let's do one. Get a little action going in this episode. All right. We're in it here. Me and Unthri are going to be squaring off here. A duel of sword and shield. You are far more equipped than I am, but you do not enter the block! Come around to the... Oh, a nice miss. But how do you deal with this swipe in the... F okay, you block it very well, actually. You were fooled. Oh, man, I was fooled. Hallard of Garamont is not afraid of a noble of Vlandia, for he shall soon become that noble. I will take your lands, Unthri. Oh, I mean, I will... I will also have lands, Unthri. Oh, man. These, uh... Oh, the other nobles are typically very... jacked. There's room between us. Oh, my shield's broken. Kallard is not afraid, though. He's still a man who can block. Ooh! Take that and this. Ooh! Oh! Oh! This is intense. Oh! I'd rather have lost by Billman than that. That was... That was terrifying for me. The whole, look at the lifeless eyes I've got. Well, it looks like Jacqueline has bested us. So far, we have been bested in two games. One of foolery, and the other one of tournament. So, Kallard of Garamond is off to a rough start here, but he will find his way. We'll move on through these towns here, take a look at some stuff. Anything to recruit? Nothing of note worth right now. And one thing that kind of I've noticed is that, oh, there are some good-sized band of looters here. Sometimes in between these little portions where you have um, just won a war or you're just come to peace, the game kind of hits a bit of a lull. And that's when I've noticed you should be kind of uh, working on building your armies back up, take some time to um, recruit more soldiers, uh, train those soldiers, do some tournaments, and converse with nobles. Building your relation with other nobles is, is in my experience, very important. Um, you know what, we still have some squires, so everything will charge in. Including Kallard of Garamond, who fearlessly charges far ahead of his companions in a foolish, brazen act of pride. But one, uh, the cheese cart, the cheese cart slowed me down. Look at that, just bulldozing through. These Valandian knights who stopped my lance. Now this doesn't really help my men because I'm doing the killing. Um, and then my knights come in and just kind of swoop through everything. But I also need to train. That's something that you don't want to neglect. You do want to get your own skill levels up. So that you can continue to do damage to other lords when you're fighting them in, in uh, large pitch field battles. Um, and you also just want to make sure you can just do damage and get better items. Like, getting your riding up to 60 as fast as you can I think is pretty imperative. Um, you want to be able to access those nice war mounts, or war horses and the such. I'm pushing over here to some more looters. Not a ton of fast forwarding here today just because I do think that this portion of the game is important to kind of go through with you guys. And that it's all pretty relatively close together. Killing some of these looters real quick will be uh, a fun adventure. And this time we'll just do uh, infantry with our auxiliaries as well. Come, men. I know it is cold. Murty and the Smith is covered in head to toe and felt. But we will find our enemy and we will kill them in these wooded forests. Also not opposed to the metal forests that you see in Batania. Infantry! Archers! Move! 
Couple archers back, get him in range of stuff. Good job, men. Way to charge things down or miss. I'm just hacking things apart ceaselessly. Callard of Garamond shows no mercy for the looters. And actually, a, a good tactic here is to kind of just let the looters get away. Um, because then you can just recharge them and do... Um, or re-engage them in another fight and have your men do stuff. But I'm clearly getting a lot of one-handed and riding right now, so I want to take advantage of that. <clears throat> And I think that'll do. The rest can get away. The men are doing a fatal amount of damage, too. Look at that. Uh, perhaps there is a chance for Callard of Garamont to redeem himself in Galen with another tournament, as it were. Right. She'll do this one as well. Whoa! Put Archer Charge! Yes, nothing like the smallest tree in the entire forest to stop me dead in my tracks. What was I thinking? I, I'll kindly wait here for the looters to attack me. Callot of Garamont, a knight, a man, so regal, so chivalrous, that he would never cut down legions of looters ceaselessly with his men all equipped to the teeth probably provided for their own by their own houses or maybe even from the state itself but either way Khaled would never do such things like it's pretty fatal 13 to 1 i mean we're absolutely killing these guys this is going to give us some good income at well passable income at least for the mo for the most part troops a bandit pay base near Ferton. hmm Bandit base Burton is probably this one right here, which is quite strong. And we all know horse bandits and sea raiders are my enemies. A western pike. Now this one could be interesting. I don't think I've ever really taken a look at the western pike. And it might be pretty good for uh, one of our other characters. So let's take a look at this uh, tournament. Okay, so this will probably be one of those pikes you can only use with two hands. And it looks like this is going to be pretty interesting. So, the Batanian Volunteer and the Imperial Trained Infantrymen are the only non-notables or nobles in this entire tournament of Galen. So this should be pretty interesting. This should be a pretty fun one, at least, as far as um, skill level and competition goes. Oh, of course, they vote. Mertian, what are you doing? Is this where you repay me for getting you felt gloves in the middle of winter? Oh, no. Mertian, no. Oh. Oh. Oh! Take that, Martian. Your felt gloves shan't avail you. Oh, Morocco is just hitting me hard here. There it is, Morcon. You take the shield bash and face swipe. A favorite of Coward of Garamont. Continue to bet into here. Okay, so the Batanian volunteer, so a bit of a buy. A little, little bit of a, a pass here. Watch, this guy's just going to one-shot me. McCallard fares fears not anyone from the woodland realms of Batania. As you can see, you volunteer. Right. Let it be known that volunteers are only important for tax benefits or true passions. Well, oh, this is not good. At least we have someone who is uh, another notable on our team. Right, so we got one. Aha! Edirond and I progress forward. Looks like, wasn't Durthert was was beaten out in the first round? Okay, King is not the king of the tournament. Aha, Adirond, you thought I would couch the lance, but I did a bit of a feint and went right for your chest. Winning the tournament of Galand, Galand, maybe the hardest one we've done as far as like the level of competition. Um, I've never had that many notables in one tournament. That's that's pretty spicy right there. That's a lot more difficult. Anything fun with the party to do? Sprouts can go up to saplings. We'll wait a little bit on them. Not much craziness going on just yet. That is it. 
And let's take a look at this. Um, we'll sell all this. And what is this Western Pike? Yeah, I, I assume this was a no horse, two handed, uh, no shield item. So we'll sell everything here. We don't really have anyone that is on foot that would use that. Yeah, just making sure. We'll sell everything. Ah, oh, the Light Lance. What did I give him? Anything impressive for Callard? Mmm, the Western, the Western Chainmail is quite nice. It is 13k, though, as far as money goes. And I'm not a huge fan of its aesthetics. Like, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, and what I also don't like is it's really heavy, as you would expect for a dress made almost entirely of chainmail. So we'll continue to use the scale armor until we find something a little bit better. Um, oh, I see. This the sleeveless padded coat versus the padded, padded short coat. Okay, I see. I see. But nothing crazy here. I think Ox Hall is going to be our best bet for nicer armor because I believe it has an ironmonger, and ironmongers are going to produce more armor for us. Let's take a look here. Anyone at the keep? Oh, there's quite a lot at the keep. So let us maybe go to the keep and see what we can do or see who we can have fun conversations with. Ha ha ha! Gallard, it's been a while. So then, what is it? Um, let me see here. Would you care to pass the time with the game of Mutare, which I've just learned? Durthert? Ha ha ha! Very well. I don't mind jesting your medal. Let's... I mean, let's begin then, in my voice. Callard, I mean. But where is... Are you just... You're not going to follow me, are you? You're going to do what everyone else does to me. Oh. You've been talking to Ellis. You have been talking to Ellis, haven't you, Durthert? Oh, Ellis. Fancy meeting you here. Are you here to to trick me again with a game of Mutare or whatever, whatever it is you guys call it? Uh-huh. Well, Durthert, two can play this game. I refuse your invitation to play your game, Durthert. Gallard, calm down. All right, I'm calm down. I'm going to walk over here and see if there's anyone else to talk to. Ederand, hello. Anything of note? Thing here. Actually, what does he tell me? Uh, Engulther might be my next one. I don't think Engulther is here. Ormond, Belgir, Durthert. Now, Durthert does have a quest I could do, and it's actually kind of tedious. He'll typically require or ask you to send him a specific number and specific type. Are you, are you gentlemen plotting over here next to this tapestry of death? I'm gonna leave this room, but I got my eye on all three of you, Belgir, Lukend, and Morson. I'm gonna walk away from that. But Durthard's quest will require you to grab usually some good tiered men and bring them to a city and. I, that's honestly kind of like not that worth it, but I think that uh, talking to these to the uh, characters and trying to get in the best sorts with them is probably a good idea. Um, hmm. Yeah, he'll say these wars have taken a toll on my men. The bravest often fall first, they say, and fewer and fewer families are willing to let their sons join my banner. But the wars don't stop because I have problems. Uh, what can I do for you, sir? Which I probably won't do, but I, I would like to hear what it is. I need more recruits in Sargos Garrison. Since I'll be elsewhere, maybe you can recruit six Volandian gallants and bring them to the garrison for me. Uh, gallants? Uh, any other way? One of your trusted companions who knows how to lead men can go around with eight horsemen and pick some up. One way or another, I will pay you 2750 gold in return for your services. What do you say? I can't do that right now, unfortunately, uh, King Durthert, Lord King. Um, coming across Landy and Gallants is hard enough as it is, and I only have but one or two of my own to spare. So I unfortunately will have to turn down your generous offer to... Find you Vlandian Gallants. Ha ha ha! Well, I can look elsewhere for help, I suppose. Yeah, maybe look over there to Ellis. The cheat. I'll stand on this chair if I so wish, Ellis. People must know that your apple hogging and your hen eating is not going to save you from what you've done to me. Let's leave this place. So I have something in mind that we're going to head on over here to Usong Castle. And we're going to fast forward this as we run all the way over to this location. And uh, we'll show you guys what I have planned. OK, 
Okay. Approach the gates, request entry, and continue. Looks like just young Peric is here. What we're trying to do is find a match for young Callard of Garamont. And I found one in Liena of Day Tahir. Now, she was just at uh, the other castle, but looks like she's moved over here to Talavel Castle. And we're going to be uh, chasing uh, the mistress throughout the lands of Landia, so we'll continue to fast forward this. Ah, I see Ellis has found her way to this castle somehow and has already sent my budding wife, who does not know I will marry her yet, off on her own route again. Try and find her. She's a sneaky one. All right, so Ta Talvel itself, the actual town, so it shouldn't be too far. We'll fast forward yet again. All right, so it looks like we've we've chased her all the way back to Fair Proven where we started. We might actually be a part of this army. Larnak now. So sneaky. Okay, yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure she's in this army. If you hold down Alt, you'll be able to see. Up oh, there she is. Liena. Let us have some conversations with the fair Liena and see where this leads. Your pardon, I did not catch your name. My name is Coward, madame. May I ask your... <clears throat> May I ask your name? I am Liena of Day to Thier. We hold our lands in fief to Durthurt, king of the Vlandians, and we honor our oaths of fealty. I know your name and praise your valor, but remember that honor and compassion are also worth cultivating. Well, there is something I would like to discuss if you bring that up when you're talking about cultivating Liana. <laughs> Liana. Very well. What do you propose? My lady, I wish to profess myself your most ardent admirer. Yes, we are considering offers. These things are not rushed into, though. You know, you must uh, consider the individual, and I must approve of them as well as my father. Well, I wish to offer my hand marriage. We are considering many offers. You may certainly add your name to the list, though. We, meet, we may meet from time to time, as is the custom, to see if we are right for each other. Now, I hope to see you again soon. Oh. First meeting went off without a hitch, but maybe we can, uh, we can kind of further this along by jumping into another conversation with, with young Liana. Coward. Well, then, what is it? I'm just kind of glad to have the chance to spend some time together in this uh, snowy plain outside of Drappen Castle in, in the midst of a large army camp. But I think it's a, it's a good intimate setting for both of us. You seem like a warrior, and I myself am a knight of uh, Valandia, the Order of the uh, Lionhearted. So I figure that this would be a good chance for us to, to kind of spend some time together. Yes, it's good to have a chance to get to know each other. I, I, I would agree. They say you have traveled quite widely. Tell me a bit about your journeys. Ooh, we have our options. We know that some of these percentages are actually kind of not really the proper success chance percentages. So let's kind of choose. If there's, a, if there's an icon that is green or red, green means that it will apply my skills check in a advantage to this overall success rate. And the red means that it will uh, actually penalize me. So um, you want to be careful when you take, take a look at some of those. But what can I say? It's a beautiful world, but filled with so much suffering. I've uh, come from a distant land called Britonia, and in there, there's quite a bit of suffering. The fair forest of Athel Loren gives wake to unlimited hordes of wood elves, something you don't have here in Valandia. But let me tell you, they're terrifying, and they scream, and they're half-naked. Much like the forest bandits of your land. Oh. Yes. Yes, I've heard of uh, far distant Bretonia, and you might be correct in them being similar to Force Bandits. Between your followers, uh, your rivals, and your enemies, you must have met a lot of interesting people. Both well, these are a good 94%. Oh. 
I like human. A coward would be, would be humble. He wouldn't be boisterous and over the top. I've seen great good and great evil, but I can't. Hmm. That's actually pretty good too, though. He's a knight of the lady. He was someone that would always err on the side of the good. So I have seen great good and great evil, my lady. But I can only hope the good outweighs the evil in most people's hearts. For what I have witnessed is that people will always err to being good versus them being evil. Ah. Yes. Yes, you, you might be correct, Callard. Some people say you will go far. Suppose you were to rise to a position of power. What would you do? Hmm. Now, this is a good one, too. You know, this is generosity, valor, mercy. Very good. I hope we can bring peace to the land and justice. Ooh. I think we would go with this one. Well, I hope I can bring peace to the land and justice and alleviate people's suffering. I hope to unite the lands of Valandia under a continued long-term peace for the good of Calradia, conquering more of our lands or more of the lands of the Batanians and the Sturgians and continuing to not unite their cultures under one, ending the suffering and the plight and the wars that fill our lands. My success again. Yes, you... You might be correct. I, I, I too share this vision of a unified Calradia under Valandia. I too share your ambition, Callard. Well, it seems we have a fair amount in common. Perhaps we can talk more when we meet again. Oh, I would say that things have gone smashingly for young Callard as he uh, woos his way into the heart of Liena, a fair noble mistress in the land of the uh, clan of Dathir. Now, this is a clan tier 5, so it means it's a little bit higher up in the rankings of Valandia. Aldrich, the, the baron of the Valandians and head of the Dathir, is a noble family of the realm. He has a reputation of being aloof, whereas Liana herself has a reputation of being gallant. She is generous, honest, daring, and merciful, as well as beautiful with a smirk that would put any Valandian man to their knees. So we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of start to wrap up this episode, but I want to start heading up to the northern regions of uh, Valandia, taking a look at Revolt and Ostican and seeing if there's anything to purchase, perhaps anything to increase the, uh, the ranks of the men. And I know this was a little bit slower of an episode. Um, that tends to happen when you deal with the 37 group of, ban of looters that we're going to attack, but it tends to happen when you get in these in-between situations uh, from one war to the next. I had hoped to do some sieges and some more um, open battles this this episode, but hopefully you guys um, appreciate the kind of natural progression of uh, how this game can kind of really lull in some places and speed up in others. Because when you are involved in all these different wars, your character tends to kind of, your army and your character tends to kind of spiral upward until they reach a certain level where it gets a little bit slower. But we'll, we'll, we will get to that point, but I did want to kind of showcase how I deal with those in between times. And it's not by losing a gratuitous amount of the game to the NPCs, which are all tyrants. And I want to be known that Ellis is a scoundrel, a thief, and not worth my time. Oh man, that was a pretty risky engagement there. Aha! Counted strikes for the head, but misses right through the fro. Well, my men continue to do that. 26 looters killed in this engagement. Good one on the last Mertian. Mertian! Mertian! <sighs> you saw the smallest horse in the entire army. Saplings and Sprouts got some levels. Grab some more of those looters. And let's go ahead and fast forward this and head north. And if we come across any large band of looters, we'll stop and attack them as well. And uh, we'll just kind of continue that trend until another war starts. But we'll get up there to that northern region and see what's up there. Oh, looks like another minor clan we can take advantage of. Now, this one is all archers. So this will be very tedious of a fight. And he actually might be a little bit faster than us. Well, he's 4.9. I'm on 
We should be able to just catch them over here on this uh, peninsula. This should give us some good money and a really great way to kind of close out this episode as we, aha, catch him. Leothold of the Brotherhood. So, I think it's time that we fight. Okay. We'll attack this man. This is good because it'll also give us a chance to um, get some more my shield wall here. You guys will go into a loose formation. Now, I don't have the most men for a good tight shield wall, so this will be very interesting. As you can see, I've got mainly peasants. But they will advance slowly, staying hopefully within somewhat of a shield wall. Archers will charge in. And our cavalry will follow me for a flanking maneuver. It's nothing but archers, though. So it's, my men are going to take a hail of gunfire. And by gunfire, I mean bowfire on the way in. 8, 9, and 19, arboreals, saplings, and sprouts. It'll be a pretty interesting engagement. We'll probably take some losses on our infantry. That's okay. We have quite a lot of uh, chaff infantry, as it were. Cal of Garamond is not afraid to throw the peasant to the lion. As that is their lot in life. Quickly, men. Forge this really tedious hill. Now, the nice thing here, too, is we're pulling those archers in a direction away from my other troops. I mean, they will start to turn around and about face and shoot them. But it will give us a chance to kind of get some good charging in. Aldric, you've been wounded. I am almost wounded, Aldric. My men need to charge. Charge it is. I'm using uh, advance will kind of keep them in formation, and we've just I've just told them to kind of have at it. <laughs> Do you not know where their lord is? I believe he's already wounded. Yeah, he's already wounded. I think. No, he's not yet. We lost of Landy and Sergeant, unfortunately. Those arboreals are so fast, see? Ha ha! Okay, we wounded the old of the Brotherhood somehow. A good uh, battle here. Nice one there. Yes, perfect. Twelve lovely prisoners. And you as well, Leothold, shall come with me to the closest castle. Now, I think we have enough arboreal saplings and sprouts. We don't need to really jump these higher um, or put them into our army. I think we're, we're pretty content there. The squires, though, let's jump them up to gallants. We've got a good amount of gallants now in knights, which is, is quite good. Um, the rest of my army, footmen is only three, two of our recruits, and three of our peasants. We did lose two men on that. That's okay. Ah, a thick leather vest. Unfortunately, nothing of, of note there. Let's, so, let's go over here to drop in castle. Turn these guys in, donate the prisoners, because that'll give us some good, um... Influence. Unfortunately, we don't really have a good mercenary contract, as you can see. Every 30 days, your mercenary contract will be reevaluated and it'll drop in value or increase in value depending on any wars that were going on and your relative strength to those wars. Right now, there's no wars, so I'm not going to be getting a ton for my mercenary contract. So, yeah, that's going to get me 80 now for 22, and that's going to be across a couple turns. So, now let's uh, fast forward yet again and get up to Rovalt to uh, hopefully kind of close our episode out. Okay, so this should be a good location to stop our little journey here for the day. And we'll come back with more episodes of Coward of Garamond. And I do want to start producing these at a much faster rate for you guys. I got a little uh, hung up. Uh, doing some stuff this weekend so don't worry we will get back on getting these out at a consistent rate for you guys 
Um, so let's take a look here real quick at what we've got. Ooh, banded leather over mail. One of my favorite pieces of armor in the Valandian repertoire. Now, unfortunately, this thing costs a whopping 3,000 gold. And between all of our money, we have a paltry 8k. So we will hold off on that, but we now know that that is there to be acquired. And this is the Volge. Hmm. Okay. Perfect. So I think we'll we'll go ahead and end things there. Um, Calder of Garamond here has kind of done a quite a quite a little bit of interesting things this episode, right? He's he's made contact with Liana. He started a budding romance with her. And we'll see how that progresses in further episodes and hopefully establishes his wife in Valandia. And she's obviously, if we take a look at Liana's character real quick, um, she is quite the general and leader. 110 steward, 160 tactics. So she actually might make a great secondary party going about and doing her own thing or eventually actually joining into our party and becoming a great uh, foil even to Callard as someone who's... Clearly more skilled than him. <laughs> so we'll see how that kind of pans out in future episodes here. But hopefully you're enjoying this little uh, foray and journey with Callard of Garamont. And as we progress through the game and as we progress through the uh, patches, hopefully to come out this week, we'll be jumping to the ones that are the most stable. Right now we're playing on version 1.3 beta branch. And hopefully there'll be a 1.4 beta branch uh, this week or some more stability increases to this beta branch. Um, but, but as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that action. And if you haven't picked up Mountain Blade, you can purchase it from the link in my description below. That will allow you to give, uh, I think, about a 16% discount as well as a 10% commission back to me. It's a great way to help out the channel without pretty much uh, doing much of anything. But as always, guys, again, thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below, all that kind of fun action. But have a good one and take care.